Hey, it's Bart Big or Bart coming to you with something different, something a little weird, something a little kooky. So, after doing the three different peated 16 bottle shootouts, three different ones, yes, okay, the final one was kind of a culmination of the two, I found out I really, really love Ardbeg. Blind, I was picking Ardbeg, Ardbeg, Ardbeg. Hints, Ardbart, I started to be called, or uh, Bartbeg. So, I had a chance. Had a fan said, hey, there's a liquor store. Um, you can source. They will ship to Kansas. Here are the prices. And I was like, you know what? I wouldn't have done that until we did the peach shootout. Now I will. So I have actually tried a sample of the Ardbeg Perpetuum. And forgive, I'm going to ask right now. You know I will blow some of these names. But I'm going to be pouring these into our blind sample bottles, which I've labeled A, B, C, and D. I will then kind of randomly mix them up without not trying to pay attention and then just kind of pick out what I like. But you'll see A, B, C, D. Next, I've got the Ardbeg Ori Verdes, and it's got a little bit of green to the Verdes statement there. We've then got the uh, Ardbeg, oh, I'll blow this, Arig Nambist. 1990, limited 1990 release. All right. Um, and then we're going to go to the Ardbog, the ultimate Isla single malt scotch whiskey. Um, it's got a Rudis on the front of it, which is pretty cool. The bronze short sword. I guess the Rudis is the wooden version that the Gladiators got. All right. So uh, I am going to try to do these uh, little tastings the best I can. Uh, I do not believe in saving and collecting my whiskey. I believe in tasting and savoring instead. So we're going to open these up. I did have a little bit of concern of, you know what, sometimes the, uh, the peat over time will diminish if you don't consume, which just means I'll need to bring friends over. <laughs> All right. We're going to take them out of the box and leave them here and kind of slide them off to the side here a little bit so I can get them poured. And then I'll mix these up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Let's get this off. Um, I'm intrigued and have been wanting to do this for a while, but I wasn't finding the time for it. And uh, then I thought, you know what, if I don't get to it, I am going to end up just being a collector. They're going to sit there and gather dust. So we try not to have dusty bottles on the dummy set. <laughs> Although over there, the ones for review, yep, sometimes they do get a little bit dusty. So this whole filling time is a lot more fun when Scott is here because I can ramble and bamble while he's pouring or vice versa all right wow so let's see what we got whoa i just broke it so we're gonna have to pause i got a little bit in a hurry wow i broke the cork on the 1990 limited let me get the other one paused or poured and then i'm going to go save save that bottle here let me get that down. Okay, we're going to be a little more careful. That was an older bottle. Ah, bummer. We'll get it out. We'll get it out. Have that happen a few times with some old ones. Let's come off nice and up and easy. Come on. There we go. That one's still wet. I got to tell you, I'm becoming more and more fan of the... Uh, of the synthetic cork. It holds together and it doesn't do any harm. All right, hold on, let me pause. Whew. All right, we're back. I've got that much failure there and it was a little bit worse than that even on the inside. Part of it got stuck to the side of the bottle. So as I was corkscrewing it out, which I've had great luck with before, I always do that. It kind of still came out pieces and a little bit of cork went down into the bottle, which I'll be straining out later. But I was able to get um, 
uh, enough poured for a sample, and I had a Corey Vrecken um, empty bottle. Sorry, I'm still a little bit distressed. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's cork this for now. All right. And so A, B, C, D. Now what I'm going to do is completely, let's even not close my eyes. We're going to do like, what is it, five card money? I don't know what it is. Probably more like the, the P and which cup is it under. So we're going to mix these up a little bit. Some of you following may know exactly what is what. I do not. And just in case their color was off, I thought I would also use our glasses. So, and just for grins, let's do that. Let's do this. All right, we're going to sample. Now, water in between. What I wanted to do is I know one of them's Pretty high dollar. They're all expensive. But I thought, I was talking about playing with a whiskey. Let's taste them blind. So let's see what whatever this is. And you may even be able to see underneath if you know it's A, B, C, or D. So whatever I'm going to call it one is. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, rich, smoky, savory, a little bit of maybe a hint of peanut. Almost wanted to say like a juicy plum as well. Um, very smooth. That long, beautiful, hard bag, lingering smoke. But this, again, is more of a, a smooth, savory, velvety mouthfeel. The finish is settled out quite quickly, actually. It's almost like soft velvet with a sweet aftertaste, this, the, a light hint of smoke lingering. Still there. I'm sure it would linger a little bit longer. I'm going to drown it out. It's pleasant. That's a good hard bag. Smooth, rich, sweet. Hints of dark fruit. All right, number two. A mm. little bit more iodine here. Touch of creosote, railroad tie, tar. Still smooth. Wow, a little bit of like cigar ashtray. A um, little bit more astringent, not a lot, just more than the last one. Uh, astringent meaning dryness in my mouth, along the side of the cheek. This finish is also tailing off a little quicker than I would expect. Staying on the ashtray, on the, the cigarette ashtray. It really was feeling like cigar on the first run through. Wow. Hmm, and the astringency packed along with it. That is interesting. Both great, clearly different, uh, much sweeter. So far, probably leaning toward one, although I don't mind that whole smoky ashtray thing a bit. Number three. Hmm. Okay. Um, dry. Uh, the earth, but almost like a burning metal. I used to do a little bit of both arc welding, very, very small, and acetylene. And for some reason, it harkens to there. Kind of got a burnt metal, burnt metallic. Astringency is there with this one as well. A 
feel like the ABV might be up a little bit higher in this one. Actually, I didn't even check these. Um, hints of tobacco smoke, but they're high level here, almost like the roof of my mouth even. I could even see this one maybe opening up over time as the bottle goes. Hmm. This one's very unique, very different. I don't even know. Wow. All right, let me cleanse. There's something else there that I'm not picking up. There's some, there's some earthy notes, but it's very astringent. That's the most astringent, even over number two there. Hmm. A little more nutty, a little more malty. Pete, again, powerful. Powerful in all of them. Yeah, I get a little bit more of a bitter nut. Some spices. Kind of like a dry spice, though. Hmm. Let me nose real quick on these. Yeah, this one's got like almost a little bit of pine on the nose. Huh. That one's got a hint of the body putty, Bondo. Wow. I'm calling even more Bondo here. This is, wow, this is definitely the Bondo with even a little bit of a plastic note. Huh, acetone. Wow, there's like a sweetness though. Earthy. <laughs> You're going to kill me, but I'm getting a little bit of Bondo here too. Maybe I've gotten overdone. Uh, out of these, this was the juiciest and the sweetest, and I think my favorite. Hmm. So let me check. D here, again, is the Ardbog. Wow, it's 52.1%. Uh, lays in a rare vatting of different styles of Ardbeg. Where rich, salty whiskeys, sorry, I was making sure my sound was still good. Where rich, salty whiskeys are balanced with softer, sweeter casks to create a dram of great depth and peaty complexity. Again, I don't know which one that is, but that is the Ard Bog, the Ard Beg Arik Nam Beastie. No, I know it's not Beastie, Beast, Beast. Limited 1990 release. Oh, it says how to say it down below. Hello, read further. Ari Nam. Beishit. Beisht. Beisht. Uh, this ph <laughs> the phonetic pronunciation of Ari Nam Beisht, uh, which in the Gaelic language literally means shelter or pasture of the animals. It is also the name given to the small hill lock that forms the fulcrum between Loch Ugidal and Charlie's Dam at Ardbeg Distillery. Wow, that's one that had the cork break in it. Hmm. All right, well, let me, let me figure this out. So that is D. Wow. So my favorite was uh, out of that was the Ard Bog. So Ard Bog. D. Let's put them in order more like this. Yep. D. Interesting. 
I don't know if I could pick a number two out of those. The perpetuum is A. Hmm. In line with B here is the Ari Virtus. It's got some toasted notes that are on here. The Whiskey of Gold. Uh, I can't read half of this. Uh, mocha coffee, toasted cask lids, creamy vanilla, dram of two halves. The other reason I'm doing this as a special is that you can't really find these anymore. Um, you know, had I not been told these were out in the wild, I wouldn't have known, you know, where to buy them. Um, but that one was strong, but it's only 46%. Hmm. So again, 46%, I should have been checking, 49.9, uh, and 47.4. All right, well, the cork thing might have been the most interesting thing for you there, um, but I wanted to step back in time with some of these and see what they were like, and uh, I'll, I'll touch back on them. Um, a lot of times... Uh, these will open up as they get a little bit of air. So there you go. Scotch it. You scotch gods. And I was just thinking I should have yelled. I'm going to test these Ardbegs and yell, Toasted! But everybody's sleeping. See you guys.